since it first became obvious that the hovercraft was here to stay, the British services have kept a careful eye on its development. In 1962, the Inter-Service Hovercraft Unit was set up to assess the potential of these craft as an additional form of transport and to train staff so that the knowledge of techniques would keep abreast of development. The 200 Squadron Royal Corps of Transport was formed later to gain experience in the use of hovercraft in precise service roles. Most of IHU's early experience in handling hovercraft came from using the SRN-5 and SRN-3. The 16-seat N-5 was originally a successful commercial hovercraft and was later used extensively in Vietnam by the United States forces, where its amphibious qualities coupled with its speed and maneuverability proved extremely effective over otherwise impassable terrain. The 3 was built largely for experimental purposes. Nearly 24 meters long and with a payload of 3 tons, the two air schools give a top speed of 70 knots. The SRN-6 has been aptly described as the workhorse of British hovercraft. It's in regular service all over the world and has been adapted for more applications than any other hovercraft. Ice trials in Sweden in the winter of 1966 showed that the craft had great potential for coastal work in ice-bound areas. Over smooth ice, high speeds were possible because of the low drag, though the same effect caused some loss of maneuverability. A larger turning circle was needed than on a high drag surface. But it was proved that SRN-6 could travel over smooth or broken ice, where no other surface vessel would be able to. Later trials carried out in Norway with the cooperation of the Norwegian Army provided further evidence of the value of hovercraft in near Arctic conditions. In these temperatures, the ability to get men and equipment ashore dry is vitally important. Though this exercise was carried out in clear weather, a typical situation could involve snow, ice, freezing rain and poor visibility, a combination that would preclude the use of any transport other than the hovercraft. completed the 5,000 mile Trans-African Expedition was taken to Abidjan on the Ivory Coast where it showed that it could be operated successfully in violent surf conditions. However, an accident during the trials indicated that extreme care was necessary when manoeuvring in surf close to the beach. A problem associated with the use of hovercraft is getting them from one area of suitable terrain to another. The trials have been carried out on the construction of a hoverway a track along which the craft can move under its own power. Various cross-sections were tried. The first, shaped like a shallow V, was unsuitable because the craft oscillated so much that on one occasion it left the track altogether. The track producing the best results was flat-bottomed, with soft retaining walls sloped to one in three. Bends were banked with a minimum radius of seven to one meters. The required was not a major one, being comparable to the building of an earth road. Despite the inclusion of gradients up to one in 13, block speeds of 25 knots were maintained. Considerable dust was generated when the track was dry, but visibility from the craft was not affected. The engine was protected by dust filters, but there was some erosion of the propeller blades.
To move the N6 greater distance, for example overseas, the quickest way is by air. A single Belfast aircraft can carry the hovercraft with the centre section and the two side bodies stowed separately. Two Hercules aircraft would be needed, one carrying the centre section and the other the side bodies. As a result of trials carried out for the Royal Air Force in 1966 and 7, some SRN-6s have been equipped for crash rescue and firefighting. One of these craft is stationed in New Zealand at Auckland Airport. Here, the vast mud flats which are exposed at low tide are inaccessible by boat or land vehicles. Any airport located in the similar estuary will encounter the same problem, and the hovercraft is likely to be the only practicable means of crash rescue having greater survivor capacity than the helicopter and a better all-weather capability. The Army has bought an interesting new craft for evaluation. The SRN-6 Mark V has two control cabins placed one on either side of the craft, leaving a freight carrying space down the center. The bow ramp provides direct access to the freight deck and the craft will easily accommodate such loads as a Volvo snowcat and trailer. This craft has obvious potential in the amphibious assault and logistic roles. craft with plenty of carrying capacity is the 47-ton BH-7 Mark IV. Able to transport a 12-ton load, it can easily carry a number of light vehicles and has plenty of room for personnel. BH-7 is powered by a single Proteus engine, driving a 6-meter propeller. Cruising at over 50 knots, it has a range of 240 nautical miles and can be deck carried on a standard heavy lift ship. The Iranian Navy has purchased a number of these craft for service in the Persian Gulf. The Royal Navy has acquired another version of the BH-7. The Mark II is not intended for logistic use and has no bow ramp or large freight door. It has similar performance characteristics to the Mark IV and aroused considerable interest during a trip to Sweden and Denmark where, amongst other trials, it was driven over ice from the south of Sweden to the most northerly point of the Gulf of Bothnia. This craft will be valuable for formulating future staff requirements for custom-built hovercraft. The Navy has also been following with interest the evaluation of the 76-ton VT-1. The VT-1 is a hybrid hovercraft, propelled by variable pitch water screws and fitted with a two-meter skirt. These factors ensure very good sea keeping and performance, coupled with precise maneuverability. The top speed is in the region of 40 knots. Possible naval applications could be for fishery protection, fast patrol work and anti-submarine warfare. The largest hovercraft of all, the SRN-4, is in regular service 
ferrying passengers and vehicles across the English Channel. Doors at bow and stern make loading simple and are capable of accepting heavy coaches and lorries. Powered by four Proteus engines, variable pitch propellers on swivelling pylons provide very precise control and manoeuvrability. The SRN4 is capable of operating in three and a half metre waves and wind speeds of up to 35 knots. Studies have shown that four of these craft could lift a mechanised battalion across the channel in 35 minutes. Most small hovercraft now being used by the services have the disadvantage of being noisy, having a high profile and being subject to sideways drift in high crosswinds. They also have vulnerable side bodies. On the other hand, they can maintain high cruising speeds and they have good overwater and cross-country performance. The Army has assessed a small hovercraft which suffers less disadvantages than other in-service craft and incorporates some unique features. CC-7 has a low profile and ducted fan propulsion which is comparatively quiet and gives better directional control. Rudders mounted in the propulsion airstream provide high manoeuvrability. Louvers at the front of the fan housing provide a facility for movement astern. The CC7 up weight to payload ratio is 2 to 1, higher than any other hovercraft currently in use. While the top speed is only around 40 knots, the cross-country performance and obstacle clearance are comparable to those of the N5 and 6. The side bodies are inflatable and can be used as fenders when lying alongside ships. If the craft is required to be moved by road, the side bodies can be deflated and folded up, making the craft narrow enough to be carried by a normal road vehicle. The hovercraft has already proved its operational value as a supplement to the traditional forms of military transport. As development continues, more applications are being defined. It is safe to assume that the armed forces will make increasing use of these versatile craft in the future.